are going to move on now to Neuroflow and Matt Steiner. Hi, my name is Chris Molero. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Neuroflow. Before founding this company, I, I had the privilege of leading a platoon of soldiers. See, I'm a West Point graduate and deployed to Iraq in 2011, commanding 40 soldiers. Tragically, I had soldiers that lost their battle with depression, anxiety, and PTSD, and ended up taking their own lives. Our investigation showed that not once did they go get that behavioral health help that was right there on base for them. The tragedy is that we know there are ways for them to get better. Neuroflow is a scalable care management solution for measurement-based behavioral health in all care settings. The award-winning company has quickly become a leader when it comes to empowering organizations to effectively measure and manage behavioral health. Available on iOS, Android, and mobile web, Neuroflow helps you deliver personalized 24-7 content and resources to SOF operators to use in the field for supporting anxiety, depression, resiliency, sleep, and much more. Hi, my name is Matthew Steiner, and I'm the Director of Government Affairs here at Neuroflow. Now, before the COVID-19 pandemic, one in four people in our country suffered from a mental health illness. That means a quarter of my colleagues and a quarter of your colleagues at NASA are as well. But sadly, 67% of our friends, coworkers, family members, they don't get the help that they need. Now in this unprecedented era of COVID-19, during this pandemic, social distancing can make people feel so isolated and lonely and can increase stress and anxiety. Fear and worry about your own health, the health of your loved ones, financial situation, your job, or your loss of support services you rely on. Changes in sleep or eating patterns, difficulty sleeping or concentrating, and increased use of alcohol and sadly other substances. Now, mental health is the single most expensive medical condition in the U.S and is multiplied when presented in a person with a chronic condition. The cost of care is estimated to be two times to three times higher for people with a comorbid behavioral health and chronic condition versus those with just a chronic condition alone. But beyond cost of the system, behavioral health is costly to employers. Depressive disorders contribute significantly to more sick days annually than any other condition and people with comorbid mental health and medical conditions cost employers approximately twice as much as those with either condition alone. And now, more than ever, increased access to mental health services and support is paramount during this pandemic. Now, we all know there are too many gaps in mental health services, not enough behavioral health specialists, and geographic distance keeps some of us from accessing these services. But how can we utilize in technology not to replace human interaction, but to augment and supplement it? Just eight months ago, at Neuroflow, we had 40,000 individuals using our technology. And by the end of this year alone, we're gonna have 250,000. Last year alone, we raised over $11 million in funding from the nation's leading venture capital firms. We're also actively partnering with the leading provider systems like Jefferson Health, and the U.S. government through our partners at the Department of Defense and the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs. Neuroflow also supports over 150 other organizations across leading health plans and providers to deliver digital evidence-based solutions to their end users. And as a trusted partner of the federal government, we have the unique ability and capability to sole source contract with any government entity. Now, Neuroflow is a healthcare technology and analytics company enabling behavioral health access and engagement across a continuum of care, combining applied artificial intelligence, highly engaging mobile applications, and a care team dashboard. Neuroflow helps leading insurance, healthcare, and government organizations deliver personalized evidence-based behavioral health solutions. Our suite of HIPAA-compliant cloud-based tools simplifies remote monitoring and behavioral health integration in all care settings in order to improve outcomes, overall wellness, and cost of care. With Neuroflow, organizations can finally bridge the gap between mental and physical health, help people feel better and faster. 
We customize our product for the unique needs and mission of the organizations we serve and partner with. We can customize for our airmen, we can customize for pain management clients for our providers in Oklahoma, and we can customize for our Space Force members. Leveraging extensive experience in user experience in behavioral economics, gamification, and remote monitoring. NeuroFlow users stay engaged and highly responsive with a turnkey program that supports the measurement and management of behavioral health conditions. NeuroFlow, we enable automated risk stratification, deliver validated assessments, such as PHQ-9 for depression, GAT-7 for anxiety, and engage members with personalized 24-7 behavioral health resources and content. Coupled with an extensive offering of care coordination and coaching services, we stand as the only enterprise grade solution that helps to reduce the cost of care without sacrificing member engagement and experience. Our user facing app was developed by designers in industry with the consumer directly in mind. It's engaging and each component of the application is evidence based. You cannot provide help to folks if they are not engaged. Automated prompts remind employees to complete exercises, which increases compliance by 30%. Caring letters and access to 24 seven crisis resources reduces suicide risk by up to 50%. Now let's look at NASA Flight Director Sam as an example of how we're able to intervene for the betterment of Sam. Sam works at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas, roughly 1,400 miles away from NASA headquarters in Washington, D.C. On the platform, a trigger. Sam's PHQ score, depression screening, declines. So as a result, content is automatically assigned. An evidence-based depression 101 template is auto-assigned with education and cognitive behavioral therapy activities. Now, because real-time feedback is provided to the NASA care team, providers are alerted and conduct measurement-based care, allowing for more informed decisions. We're also able to gain population health insights. Data gathered from the entire NASA workforce provides real-time data for evaluation of programs and ongoing assessment of department mental wellness and resiliency. So Sam's experience is also how NeuroFlow is able to risk stratify. I'll give you an example. So with our work with the Philadelphia Fire Department in the station say of 60, if 5% are scoring high for anxiety and depression, we're able then to identify those firemen and dedicate and allocate all the appropriate and necessary resources. Now, aside from helping your employees, it's about keeping NASA mission ready. On average, 27 workdays are lost in a year because of a mental health issue. Before COVID-19, 40% of employees felt burned out. Effective integration of mental health services overall saves $48.3 billion a year. Now at NeuroFlow, we have focused on improving behavioral health access and engagement with members. Our solution has achieved engagement of over 73% after the first month alone. And we have seen a reduction in the percent of NeuroFlow patients with a severe depression score that dropped to moderate to better. Now, again, regarding reduction in costs, there are many studies that show that those who are engaged in behavioral health condition have led to better management of their condition, which results in lower costs. Now, we're able to customize use cases for various populations. And for example, I wanna give you a story about how we were able to intervene in a Philadelphia police officer's life. It's about maybe roughly a month ago, one of our care team managers received an urgent alert from a Philadelphia police officer. My fellow employee immediately reached out to that officer, provided resources, was able to schedule an appointment with the psychiatrist that day. That's just one ex example of the many examples that we have at NeuroFlow where we're literally intervening to save people's lives. So I first found out about NeuroFlow from a colleague who said his clients were getting better faster. Getting better faster, I'm in. I contacted somebody from NeuroFlow and I, you know, quickly got on board and it's really exciting to see the significant advancements in people's progress and how it just works and sticks. 
As a clinician, there's only one hour a week that I'm with people, sometimes every other week that I'm with people. So what, what is everyone doing to monitor how things are going for them in the other 167 hours a week? And so this enables me to be a part of that process. They're able to be this self-monitoring coach and their own therapist, which is what any psychologist wants for their client, is to be able to be that monitoring person. You want to kind of teach the client how to do that for themselves, and Neuroflow really provides that platform. The need for innovative, technology-driven solutions in healthcare is at an all-time high. That's why the culture at Neuroflow is one built around encouragement, having a healthy disregard for the impossible, and daring to be great. Neuroflow's core values guide our mission of supporting care providers in their endless pursuit to help patients feel better, faster. We look at healthcare problems very dynamically. Everyone brings a part of the solution to the table. We have data scientists, engineers, and product developers. We've teamed up with other healthcare systems from around the country, including health plans, and even patients, to come to the table, to collaborate and partner together so we can create the best, most effective tools for the patients that deserve them the most. We have a trusted and passionate team of experienced individuals. And I feel really lucky every day to work here. I really kind of had that sense of service and mission I felt like in the Marines, and that really resonates here. Only eight months ago, we had about 20 employees, 20 people on the team, and now we have over 50. We're growing exponentially. Partnering with Neuroflow, with NASA's headquarters in Washington, DC, you'll be able to keep a pulse and improve the mental health of your workforce. From the Kennedy Space Center at Cape Canaveral, Florida, the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas, to the Armstrong Flight Research Center at Edwards Air Base in California. No matter where your employees are at, Neuroflow can help support your astronauts, engineers, and scientists safely deliver their mission at NASA while driving down healthcare costs and improving access no matter where they are. Thank you very much for your time. All right, let's open it up for questions. Uh, yeah. Can you tell me on your survey, do you use physiological measurements also, or is it all a um, user response? Thanks for the question. Yes, so um, the way the, the system works is there are clear questionnaires and activities that a user would go through. But we also use non-data, meaning if they don't log in or if they don't complete an activity, et cetera, all of that comes together to help influence what we consider our cumulative risk score, which goes back to the provider. Gordon, thanks for the information. Uh, how do you convince a skeptic, uh, folks who don't see depression or, or anxiety in their lives that this is worthwhile or the, the employer that this is worthwhile. I used to um, ignore those health monitoring systems like this while I was at Boeing because they seemed to be a waste of time to me. So how do you convince folks like me that this is worthwhile? That's a really good question and thank you for asking. So the, the thing about Neuroflow that's really important to understand is this isn't an off the shelf wellness app that you would just go to the app store and download or be made available as a service through an, e, you know, um, uh, an EAP. This is a solution that is driven through your provider. So there's a relationship that you have with your primary care provider where you'll actually be engaged at the initial onset. So when you take your initial, uh, whether that's a PHQ, GAD7, et cetera, through a primary care practitioner or a care team, that's what would trigger whether or not you need to be engaged in Neuroflow. That baseline risk puts you into a stratified group, whether that's a, a low acuity, mid or high. Low to, to rising risk is actually where Neuroflow thrives. That's, that's the area where people can control um, and start to engage in a self-care plan or program. As people get at a higher level of risk or higher level of acuity, we would actually coordinate um, and get them to the right level of care, whether that's a, a psychologist, uh, a psychiatrist, right, some sort of other crisis line. Um, and that's what you heard Matt mention in relation to a person who had actually been flagged and identified as someone who was in a position that could, could, you know, could potentially hurt themselves. And we were able to rapidly get them the support they needed to avoid that event. 
Um, so, so it's actually, it's not something that you would maybe just grab off the shelf and that's the big differentiators. This is actually flowing through your provider, um, which is where you have a trusted relationship already. James, um, interesting platform. Quick question for you, just uh, on top of what Dallas asked. So if your primary care provider is making the referral or recommendation to Neuroflow, mm -hmm. is that different than the normal process where they might refer you to a psychologist or a, a therapist? And what does that what does that change look like? Yeah, thanks. Another good question. So when you think about um, what we so what we call what we do is technology enabled behavioral health integration, right? So on a typical PCP visit, you may or may not be screened um, for depression or anxiety, depending on you know what their workload looks like, and that's also dependent on uh, you know how long you're in the office. So if you only have about a five minute you know ten minute uh, appointment with your PCP, it's likely they're not going to use that time to focus on going through through some sort of screener. And so the issue is that in a traditional sense, they're only going to screen those that they can that are in the office at that point in time. What we're able to do is scale, meaning they're able to actually invite their entire panel to Neuroflow to take that assessment. So we have a couple of ways that we deliver assessments. One through a tablet that's delivered or manually on paper that's delivered through the PCP visit. Two, we can do telephonic outreach through our uh, consumer engagement specialists. And then we have email, text, and the mobile app, which you saw in the video, which can actually invite and drive you to take that assessment. So what we're doing is we're actually increasing the amount of screenings that one primary care practitioner would do in any given year so that we can increase the amount of people that are identified at risk uh, and on automatically deploy the resources. And if that's the Neuroflow mobile app for self-care, or if that's to flag uh, a care coordination or or a uh, coach to to get them into a higher level of care, that's that's when that would take place. Thanks. We have a question from Ramona. Yes, I'd like to understand uh, some of the cost structure. I, I know this what you're doing now is perhaps not the ultimate goal, uh, but how does that work with regards to patient out of pocket costs and? Uh, whether you already have some insurance or that's the the goal to get insurance coverage for this sure thanks ramona so um i you know i'll i'll two parts i'll answer the question then i'll ask you to clarify the first part the ultimate goal of where we're going but the the answer as far as patient costs um the way we structure our fees is that this is covered either by uh, the employer or the uh, insurance organization as a benefit, um, or the and, and typically the provider would purchase this as a licensed solution. Again, not because it's a, a treatment. This is not what we do. We're actually a system that enables the the scalable um, assessment, um, you know, uh, capacity and and compliance that enables them to pursue the right level of care. So the care itself and the treatments that's what would be build back to the insurance company. And that's really what you would think you would need coverage for, um, the assessment, et cetera. And those are all covered by current CPT codes that exist today, whether that's for telemedicine, collaborative care, or uh, or some sort of CMS arrangement to cover uh, assessments and wellness visits, et cetera. Okay, and, I was just, I didn't question, realize. I um, well, I guess I didn't fully understand it, that your cost eventually to the insurance companies, um, uh, or I guess maybe it's not eventually, it's already happening is what you're saying, because it's already an accepted approach. Right, right. Okay. So there are, all, there are already billing codes, uh, CPT codes that are designed for depression screening, or for, uh, let's say you're a therapist and you write a medication that would be, you know, an ICD prescription. So the way, uh, the way it works is the treatments are actually still a standard um, medical treatment or clinical treatment, we're actually a technology to enable the scale in order to, to make that happen uh, quicker. Now, the PCP does have the ability to, <clears throat> excuse me, to submit, um, uh, you know, to, to bill for the assessments and whatnot. Those are still activities that they would take place. And Neuroflow would actually enable the scale of that as well. So they're doing more assessments, which means they're able to bill more, et cetera. Okay, thank you. Um, ben? Oh. I'll come to you next, Julie. Hey, James. Hey, James, this is Ben. Um, I had a question around uh, your kind of AI model. Um, uh, as we move more and more towards like machine learning for 
take doing things like diagnosis, um, there's a real opportunity for unintended bias. Um, can you talk a, at all about like uh, what your team's doing to kind of combat, uh, you know, kind of bringing bias into the the process of mental health diagnosis? Um, yeah, yeah. That, that's a really good question. And and what I'd say is. <clears throat> You know, because we're using evidence-based standardized assessments to begin with, there's really no bias built into it. It's kind of a standardized structured score that exists today. Where you would start to see that bias is in the, the cumulative risk score that we start to put together as you see, you know, the behaviors on the app, right? Did they do something, not do something? The good thing is mood tracking, sleep tracking, um, NLP built into journaling. Um, those things are all kind of built into the evidence. We're not reinventing the will there, right? We're using things that have been established um, in, in market already and in integrating it into the experience. The non-actions, I think, is where there's some opportunity there. So if someone is assigned a program and they don't complete it, you know, how much weight do we put to that given maybe they didn't have time, maybe there was an adverse event in their family, right, where they couldn't complete the, the, uh, the journals or the assignments in the particular given amount of time. And is that actually affecting the risk score, right? I think that's where, you, you know, to your point, there's some opportunity to continue doing that. But our engineers and, and product teams are, are consistently testing um, the methodology, testing the scores, um, and, and, you know, messing with it. So there's, there's one of those things that is just kind of constant uh, tweaking uh, to try to perfect it. But we feel pretty confident in what we've done to to give the provider the opportunity to say, hey, is this a situation that I should be worried about? Or is this something that we can we can kind of allow to continue? We're not making that that decision for them. We're providing them with the decision support so that they can get the information around their patient and make the best call in relation to, to that person's in individual situation. Thanks for that answer. Uh, yeah, I would really encourage you guys to uh, make sure you're using di a diverse training set. Um, you know, mm -hmm. that's another uh, really important piece. But thanks. Yeah, thanks. Um, uh, so I, I I wrote down from from the presentation that you currently have forty thousand users, uh, and I think you said by the end of this year you have two hundred fifty, or maybe uh, it was the end of next year. But how do you arrive at this number, and what is your uh, growth uh, strategy and, and, and approach? Yeah, th uh, thank you. Great question. So we have over 275,000 individuals under contract to serve this solution towards that 40,000 number is kind of active on the platform today, meaning they're currently doing activities um, and, and completing assignments. Um, so the the model, though, as far as growth is concerned, is we're, we have a direct sales model. So we work directly with the insurance providers, directly with um, the employers like the, the police and fire department. Um, we work through AFWorks. We've just signed uh, or just announced the, the, I guess, the part two of our AFWorks agreement. Um, so, so we go directly to the providers. So we go directly to these folks and encourage them to, to make this available to their populations um and and give them the resources they need in order, in order to do behavioral health integration so um currently at 275 we're i think we've grown it uh, and we have ellen on here to keep me honest i think we've grown it at about 10x over the last year and a half or so and continue just a, a really what i would consider a hockey stick trajectory this is there's never been a, a better time for mental health uh as far as the industry is concerned and you combine that with the uh, telemedicine and virtual care environment we're in a really good place uh, organizationally to uh, to continue that that trend all right cheryl um so james i have a background in nlp and i also used to be the lead engineer at red brick health so i have some Great. questions about the ecosystem about wellness um you know like red brick health there's plenty of wellness things that somewhat tackle this problem but also deal with diet smoking cessation etc that either large employers or healthcare plans are already using uh, how do you compete with them are you planning to integrate with them or replace them by providing all of those features and then are you integrating with downstream stuff like fitness trackers and all of that as well or planning to Really great question. Um, yeah, so so it's important too, I think, to establish a baseline around the landscape of uh, mental and behavioral health solutions in the market today, right? There are a lot of self-care solutions that exist. There are things that do just analytics. Um, what we're doing is we're actually integrating into the provider workflow, which is slightly different. So yes, we, uh, we integrate into the HR, 
we we bring this you know this data clinical decision support up you know up to the the clinical point of view so they can make decisions and then we bring together the different practitioners the behavioral health managers and the the telepsychiatrists together to to do collaborative care so slightly different than what you would consider in relation to a nutrition app or uh, a mindfulness app or something that would be made available through like an eap or a provider so that that this is slightly different um, and as far as your question goes, is you know, in relation to integration, we're fully interoperable. So the idea is that because we do these things, this whole ecosystem, if you are currently using something that you consider to be, you know, best in breed or best in class from a self-care perspective, we could certainly integrate with that. We do integrate with Fitbit and step trackers and things like that. So currently there's there's nothing on the table as far as we're concerned we just want to make sure people get the care and resources they need but we know the best ecosystem the best outcomes that we're able to deliver is when you use our entire ecosystem right but certainly open to integration and um and, and using you know whomever uh, an organization may have so that they can optimize their it investments thank you all right harry did you have a question um yeah look I really like the scalable assessments, but um, the, the target community you started with was the military. And um, unfortunately, I know from personal experience that uh, many of them are very reluctant to admit to issues. And mm -hmm. so how do you get buy-in to use the app where you answer the tr questions truthfully and not just get a low score? That that is a very very good question. You know, stigma um, is is certainly something that we recognize as a huge barrier um, in relation to to mental health overall as an industry, right? Um, and, and just to clarify, the majority of our uh, business has been started through uh, pain specialists, primary care, and um, and behavioral health specialists at the bulk of the market. The military is is probably one of our fastest growing, uh, you know, segments of the business. And part of the value I think that the military and the DoD see and what we're doing is that because we're using you're using this on your personal device, right? You're doing this in something that doesn't feel like you're being asked, you know, are you going to hurt yourself? This is a consumer app experience. And so what we found is that because you're kind of doing it on your own, because this is seemingly less intimidating than, you know, an assessment that you're checking boxes on in an office, um, people have a tendency to, 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 you know, enjoy going through the process of using the app. Um, and, you know, I think that there's always a level of, you know, honesty and dishonesty in relation to um, to answering questions, um, whether that's through an app or, or in office. I think there's going to be a percentage of people that will naturally not want to disclose, you know, how they're feeling. But, you know, if we can catch even one person that's being truthful and give them the resources they need, I think we've done our job, right? I think the idea isn't to tell you know to try to get 100 percent compliance um, i mean that's that's hopeful right that's what we'd like but we recognize that that's not necessarily always going to be the case but we're trying to help as many people as possible so getting you know the first step is getting that out in front of them getting them assessed giving them something that they can use to help monitor that kind of low acuity to mid acuity area uh, and then hopefully you know deflect some of these higher risk or uh, higher severity to to a higher level of care Thank you. Rick, did you have a question? You're muted, Rick. I, that's better. Uh, hey, James. So I think we're going to have a lot of fun at the impact table. Um, so as somebody that lives with post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, and uh, are you, so A, are you inc already incorporated in the VA because through my pain specialist and my psychologist and everybody else, I think I have six different apps that I'm supposed to be using. Yes, I know. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so first off, uh, are you in the VA system, and what does that look like? First of all, um, you know, I, I totally get it, and, and the VA does have multiple apps uh, that they make available, and, and they have some really good ones. Um, I think, you know, we're, our first pilot was actually with the VA, so, so we do have experience there. We're continuing to talk to, to multiple VAs across the country. 
Um, we think we've got a solution that um, can kind of incorporate a lot of the things they're trying to accomplish into one one thing. Um, you know, the, the, there's kind of app fatigue, if you will, across the industry, not just in in this space. Um, so, so being able to to take a tool that integrates kind of all of the best of breed things that they're trying to bring together and deliver it in a way that is you know built for um, for scale and consumerism. Um, I think is what we're trying to to convince them is the right thing to do. Uh, but yeah, the VA is very interested in what we're doing. They love what, what, you know the capabilities that we have. They don't. They simply don't have in those apps. Um, and so, so you know, they're very excited about what we might be able to bring to the table to hopefully collapse some of those you know ten different things you have to use uh, each day or or each week. Thank you, Neuroflow. Congratulations to the whole, uh, to all the participants and, and especially to the winners. Before we uh, head out, I want to just uh, give a big thank you to the NIA team. Uh, you guys have done a great job. Um, this was my first event and, uh, and between the interactions that we had with the companies, but also uh, all of the facilitating that's been done, uh, all, of the, all of the work and the coaching and, uh, and quite frankly, you guys holding my hand through this as I learned it too. I really appreciate all of you guys. Uh, and this was a great experience for me, and I, th I think it's been a great experience for everybody. So thank you guys. Uh, I want to make sure that anybody who's watching the live stream right now that you guys are aware that we have our Cycle 2 event coming up on October 15th and 16th. So please join us for that where we will have another round of 10 companies uh, showing us how their dual-use technology can benefit NASA while still stimulating commercial markets. Thank you.